Faithfulness, we appreciate him for another moment in his presence. Thank him for this new week. This week, we bring progress in all areas for you and I in the name of Jesus. As we operate under the grace of the Almighty God, there will be no cause for disgrace upon your life in the name of Jesus. Everything that grace can offer man, they will be yours. Grace qualifies the unqualified. Yes. It terminates disgrace in all areas. Grace will be there for you in the name of Jesus. Today is Monday, the 28th day of May. And the topic is just a continuation of that of yesterday. So we talk about grace part two. Grace will arise for us today. Shall we just bow our heads to pray? Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, amen, hallowed be thy name. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, amen, hallowed be thy name, 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 hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name, hallowed be thy name, hallowed be thy name. Father, we reference you. King of glory, we reference you. Our Redeemer, we reference you. You are the Lord. You never change. Thank you for the grace that you have bestowed upon us. As your creatures, the works of your hand. Thank you, eternal Father. We appreciate you for your goodness, your love, and your mercy at work over our lives. We are grateful. We are grateful. Blessed be your name, eternal Father. As we have called unto you yesterday, Father, that you will help us never to frustrate your grace upon our lives. You help us, Father my God, not to abuse this particular measure of faith, of grace that was released upon us in the name of Jesus. As we continue today, Father, teach us more. Grant us more understanding. And everyone, wherever we listen today, Father, let the benefits of grace be upon everyone in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Welcome to the moment of grace. The grace of God will impact your life today. Grace part two. The memory verse is taken from John chapter 1, verse 17. John 1, 17 says, The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Talking about grace, and the purpose of the grace is what we are trying to uh, bring out. As we see in Romans 3, 24, Romans 3, 24, it says, Be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. 
we are justified by his grace. Whenever one has been condemned, the grace of God brings justification to nullify everything that might have been written against one, the aspect of sin. And in Ephesians 1 verse 7, Ephesians 1 verse 7, looking at what grace has bestowed upon us. Ephesians 1 verse 7, it says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Redemption through the riches of his grace. We are justified, we are redeemed through that particular aspect of his grace. Hmm. And in John chapter 8, verse 32, John 8, 32, because grace and truth came to Jesus. Jesus was say, talking there, he said, huh, that the truth, when we know it, it shall bring God deliverance. That the truth that he has brought speaking to us. That once you know it, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. He has brought freedom, deliverance for us by the truth. You know what I said in John 14 verse 6? John 14 verse 6, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We're talking about this truth is just in the Lord Jesus. You want to be free, you want to be justified, particularly on the platform of redemption. You must have knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray as we go through today, that knowledge will come for you in Jesus' name. The Bible passage is in Romans 3, 20 to 25. Romans 3, 20 to 25. I read, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, shall, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophet. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. There is no difference, for we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. From this passage, you could see some categorical statement that by observing the law or keeping of the law can no man be justified before God. The law has no power for such because it is by the law that comes the knowledge of sin. Romans 4, 25. Romans 4, 25 says, Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification? You can see there that it was the resurrection of Jesus Christ that brought justification to man. It is not a matter of the law at all. Faith in his resurrection, believing on the fact that he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for us, and you believe in the resurrection. Justification is secured by this grace. This is the way, this is uh, what has made a way for righteousness for us through the Lord Jesus Christ. Despite all our sins, it is the redemption through Christ that brings justification. So faith in the Lord opens man to the work of redemption. You must have faith 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he was made a propitiation for our sins. Believe in it. Hold on to it. That God has spoken. And that is the word. Brethren, you start to see the manifestation of his grace upon your life through this. Now from the body of the study, it says, grace is God's character by which he shows himself as being compassionate, loving, and merciful, like we shared yesterday, accepting and generous to all of humankind. It's a, grace is just a bundle of his goodness, his love, and his mercy. God's grace shields sinful mankind from his wrath, grants them forgiveness, and bestows on them the righteousness so that they can live and grow up in faith and obedience to him. You can see what grace can do. Hmm. It grants us forgiveness and bestows upon us righteousness of God. God will help us. This is where we need to, on a daily basis, appreciate the work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, what he has done for us. So grace and mercy are particularly expressed through God's covenant with his chosen people and through Jesus Christ atoning death on the cross. He has atoning death on the cross. Grace and mercy are particular express. They are express. Because when you look at what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary, you look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, blotting out the handwritings of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. That is, all accusations that have been against us by the reason of sin and the fall of man, he took them away for us on the cross of Calvary. So I say, we should, from this particular experience and the knowledge, give glory to God for Jesus Christ for us. Because everything that has been written against us as human beings through the fall of our forefathers, they were taken away on the cross. So throughout the Bible, the notion of grace is abundantly present even where the work, the word is not mentioned. Everywhere, grace of God is working. Even though it is not mentioned, the, the grace will be there, working. You see an example very soon. Whenever Jesus brought healing to the sick and deliverance to the oppressed, divine grace was on display. Remember, in John chapter 5, 5 to 8, John 5, 5 to 8, the case of the man at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. When Jesus got there, he was even asking him some questions, but the man was trying to explain some matters, saying uh, there is no uh, hope in any way, in any way for him, but one way or the other, one way or the other, by the grace of God, the Almighty God released, he released that particular grace upon him to make him be delivered from the power of sin. And healing came immediately, I read. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 80 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, without being made whole, the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man 
when the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step down. What was the question asked? And what was the answers he was given? But God released the grace upon him. And healing came. And you know the case of John chapter 9 from verse 4? John 9 from verse 4. The, the disciples of John that saw the boy who was born blind. And they were asking questions. Who really saying that this boy was uh, the, 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 had a defect in the formation? And Jesus said, No one really sinned. And he said, Yes, that the work of the, of the, of the, of the master might be revealed. And he released grace upon the child. And the child received his sight. So he didn't mention grace, but <laughs> that locate the grace upon him located the child. So I, I pray that. The grace of God will be a display over you in the name of Jesus. The grace of God is especially expressed through salvation from sin, offered by Jesus to all mankind. That's why if you are not yet born again, you want to be under the cover of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, please accept him as your Lord and Savior. Accept him. We are not saved by works. We are saved by... Uh, <clears throat> By, by uh, grace through faith. You need to have faith in the Lord and the grace of God will be there to work for you. Speaking about Jesus as the embodiment of God's grace. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Titus 2 verse 11 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. So, the grace is there for everybody. Either rich, poor, either white or black, either learned or unlearned, the grace of God, all categories of men have been released. So, the only thing is that, as it's written in Ephesians 2 8, Ephesians 2 is said, For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. But it is the gift of God. It's not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. Grace has been released as a gift. And it says, it has appeared unto all men. Are you benefiting from this gift? You don't struggle to receive a gift. You just present yourself. This we are the display of your faith. Over this grace becomes very crucial. Jesus vividly explained the notion of grace through the parables of the prodigal son and the tax collector who was justified by praying for God's mercy as a sinner. You know the story of the prodigal son, the one who wasted all of the resources after he came from his father, but he made up his mind. I will go back to my father this time around and I will plead. Grace worked for him. And in Luke chapter 18, 9 to 14, Luke 18, 9 to 14 was the case, the case of the, uh, the tax collector and the publican. Yes, the publican and the Pharisee that were there. So the grace of God was made known. The Pharisee looked at himself, a religious person, the publican, the tax collector, a sinner who has been involved in bribery in all these awkward ways. The two of them came before the, uh, the throne of grace. They were praying. And the Pharisee was full of self-righteousness, saying, I am not like the publican, that tax collector, who is living a very terrible life, and that and that. But... The publican was there, pleading for the mercy of God. And the Bible makes it clear that grace worked for the publican. Grace is a core part of the message of the Christian faith. And hence the message of gospel is repeatedly labeled the gospel of 
the grace of God. Acts 14, verse 3. Acts 14, verse 3. He reads, Not long time therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. He gave them testimony by the words of his grace. Gospel of the grace of God. So, and they, in 1 Timothy 1.14, 1 Timothy 1.14 says, And the grace of our Lord Jesus, sorry, and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. The grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love. Exceeding abundant with grace and love. So it is important to know that divine grace is a gift of God. And it is abundant enough to secure forgiveness and redemption for anyone who is dead in sin. Raising them up and making them sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Grace is enough to change one's destiny from death to life. I read Ephesians 2, 5, and 6. Even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ by the grace we are saved and had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You can see great transformation from the state to the level of being a sinner to now be seated with the Lord Jesus Christ all by grace. So grace is the one that qualifies the unqualified. Yes, Grace is there to really cause transformation for we that are prepared to follow him. And I plead with you today, if you are not yet born again, please make up your mind. This grace is available right now. It's available. This abundant grace also opens the door to healing from all kinds of sicknesses and it delivers from captivity oppression, and all kinds of demonic powers. Grace delivers. Look at Mark, Mark chapter 5, 6 to 8. Mark 5, 6 to 8, the man of Gadara, that mad man, just saw Jesus and ran. And, the, and grace was there for him. He was delivered. The demonic oppression upon him was totally cancelled. And it became that that God originally planned for his life. So very useful for the work of the gospel. Furthermore, it is able to break down the strongholds of the devil and produce transformation in lives. It is equally important to know that this abundant grace, though undeserved, is available for free. You don't pay for it. It is free. It is freely given to everybody. If anybody is preaching salvation to you and telling you that you have to pay consultation fee, you have to pay this one, tell the fellow, no, salvation is free. Jesus paid for it on the cross of Calvary. No one can meet, can ever meet the requirements of fulfill, or fulfill the conditions necessary for accessing the benefits that grace, that God's grace gives. The least you can do is to thank God for it. The least is, you can do is to thank God. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, that any man should boast. It is the gift of God. You don't pay for gifts. It is the gift of God. It's free for every man. 
the saving grace of Jesus Christ is available to all human beings without exception. Do not reject or ignore it, but rather accept it with thanksgiving, and your life will never be the same again. Amen. Just want you to bow down heads. We want to pray quickly. Talk to the Almighty God if you are not yet born again. If you are not yet born again, I say th thank Him for the work of, of His redeeming grace. Thank Him for the work His redeeming grace has done in the life of man. Thank Him and accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. And we that are born again, we thank him for the one that his grace has done for our, our lives, recounting them to him. Recounting them to him. So in the two ways, let us pray. If you are born again, thank him for what grace has brought. For salvation that, has, that the grace has brought. Free to man. Free by his shed blood. Father, I want to thank you for what grace has brought to man by the death of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. I want to appreciate you for this, eternal Father. Thank you, thank you for what he has done for me, Lord, in the physical, in the spiritual. Thank you for impacting grace upon me. Go ahead and say, and thank God for the work of uh, propitiation. The work of propitiation. And this is now the time you accept him, accept him for what he has done. Say, Jesus, be my Lord. Say, Jesus, be my Lord. Say, Jesus, be my Lord. Thank you, O oh God. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Mighty Father, we want to thank you. King of glory, we want to appreciate you. The everlasting Father, we want to adore your name. Be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, as many that have seen, the importance of grace in one's life. And I've come to realize that it is free. My Lord and my God, I have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior now. Father, I pray that your touch will come upon their lives in the name of Jesus. That your blood will wash away every sin they have committed before now. And Lord, there will be transformation in their lives in the name of Jesus. The power to go and sin no more. Father, release upon all these that have identified with you even today in the name of Jesus. And I pray, my Father, my God, that what grace the Lord can do will be released upon everyone that have listened to you today in the name of Jesus. Grace qualified the unqualified in whatsoever areas uh, that this particular tag has been upon your children. Let your grace arise for them. Let your grace arise for them. My Father, my God, grace brings favor. My Father, let favor attend to your children in the name of Jesus. Grace terminates disgrace. There will be no more disgrace in the life of this your children in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that the cover of your grace will be there for us for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Join us as we sing. What can wash away my sins?
nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood. Sing out. Yeah. 